Hello everyone, you are live with uh, Alan Pope and myself, and this is another round of the uh, community team Q&A here on UbuntuOnAir.com. If you're watching this uh, on YouTube or somewhere else, maybe later, uh, you can find, uh, you can ask questions uh, on UbuntuOnAir.com or on Freenode uh, to Ubuntu-On-Air. And uh, so if you're on UbuntuOnAir.com, you'll see the, the IRC link right below this video, and that's the easiest way to ask a question. Just prefix your question with question. We'll see it inside the log, and then we'll get to it and answer it uh, in the order that we see them. Um, it's sort of an exciting week here for us. Uh, we have a, a few things coming up. Uh, as you know, uh, the Ubuntu phone is out in the wild. Um, the, the first folks around the world, the Ubuntu insiders, now have their hands on uh, some, some lovely phones from BQ. And uh, Alan has some more information uh, about that, which I'll share in just a second. Um, so go ahead, Alan. Yeah, so um, for those who don't know, a couple of weeks ago we had the Insiders event. Uh, we invited 30 people to London to uh, come and learn a little bit about Ubuntu Phone, and then uh, we gave them a lovely origami uh, box containing uh, the phone, a BQ phone, and uh, some rather funky headphones. And they're the first people in the world to get them. Uh, we've, uh, some of us internally at Canonical have got a few of these, but we've got the kind of the Android ones that have been flashed with uh, with Ubuntu. They've got the genuine article uh, Ubuntu phones. They're the first people to have them, and we wanted those those people to go out and uh, test the phones out, try them out, uh, have a play with them, uh, give us feedback, and uh, you know blog about things, post on their favorite social network, whatever that is, um, and uh, and they've been doing that. And uh, the nice thing is that. You know, they can say whatever they like. Uh, we're not we're not um, holding them to only give positive you know praise for the devices. Uh, you know they can they can say what they like, what's at all. Um, but overall, their uh, feedback has been positive. So uh, that, that was really uh, really quite good. Um, we've had a couple of um, we're, we're gathering a lot of feedback from those insiders. So um, that's really good. We're getting you know lots of uh, details about uh, how people are using their phones and stuff. Um, and uh, that's being fed back to the developers um, as we speak. Uh, and last week we had the first flash sale. Um, so these were announced on the Ubuntu Twitter account and the BQ Readers Twitter account. So if you want to know when the next flash sale will be, those are the Twitter accounts to follow, Ubuntu and BQ Readers. Um, the first one was Wednesday last week, I think, and uh, it started early in the morning. And um, yeah, I think BQ were overwhelmed, shall we say, with the uh, with the response. Um, they, I don't think they expected quite that many people to be jumping on their website and trying to buy a phone. Uh, I think we uh, we kind of took them unawares there. So yeah, they have some infrastructure issues, um, probably through not anticipating quite how uh, how many people would be buying the thing. I think they. They expected a few people to buy them over the course of uh, over the course of the day, but um, yeah, everyone hit the site all at the same time, and uh, yeah, we we took it out Ubuntu style. Um, so then they did another one later on the Wednesday, and uh, there'll be another one at some point. Uh, you'll have to ask the have to follow Beaky Readers and Ubuntu to find out when. Uh, that's out of our control. So um, yeah, look out for that. Awesome. Um... And if you're if you're really curious and want to see uh, some of this hardware live in person, you're in luck. Uh, the prestigious Michael Hall will be at scale uh, for anyone who might happen to be romping around uh, Southern California this week. Uh, he'll be at scale, and I know he's going to have a few devices. I'm not sure what all he's going to have. Maybe some tablets. Definitely his uh, his own Nexus 4 running Ubuntu Touch. And uh, I'm not sure if he'll have a Krillin or not, but. Uh, well, a couple of other people who are insiders who have the um, BQ device will be there. So I know um, John O'Bacon and Stuart Langridge, who both got their uh, their BQ devices in London, they will be at scale. So uh, maybe if you pounce on one of them, uh, they won't be hard to spot. They'll be on a stage at some point uh, at scale. So, uh, yeah, grab hold of one of them, tell them I sent you, and, uh, yeah, have a play with their phone. There you go. <laughs> I'm just envisioning the uh, uh, folks just mobbing onto Jonah, ripping the phone out of his hands. Uh, yeah. It's all yeah, Pope approved. So. Yeah, do that. Do exactly that. <laughs> awesome. 
Okay. Uh, well, so like we said, this is uh, this is your guys' time, so feel free to ask us questions. We've already got a, a nice little list going in the channel, and we'll just start diving through them. Uh, feel free to ask as we go, and, and we'll get to them in order. So let's see what we have on top here. Uh, great. First question is, what is the next flash sale? Um, we don't know. We're 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 uh, well. Uh, we're we're beholden just as you guys are to <laughs> to watching the the Twitter feeds to find out what it is. Um, it should be happening sometime this week, and uh, uh, fingers crossed we'll get those to be uh, continual regular occurrences. Uh, and again, hopefully the the site will be better prepared this time for the the uh, uh, deluge of requests. Uh, so it's kind of fun uh, uh, bringing down the site, but but honestly, I hope you guys uh, all have success this week uh, in in ordering your device. Yeah, we're, and we're we're doing the same thing as you. We're we're ordering them as well. So right. you know, despite the fact that I have one of these, uh, I'm still this is a company one. I want my own. Uh, you know, a little piece of history. So I was, you know, virtually queuing up with everyone else. Um, <laughs> I, we we don't get preferential treatment. We were doing exactly the same, uh, trying to get in the BQ website, trying to order the devices uh, early on Wednesday morning. So you know, we're in exactly the same position. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of other people will be uh, doing the same thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I can always just blame Alan and say he got my phone. But. <laughs> yeah, I did manage to get one in the second sale in the afternoon. Right. I, uh, I managed to order one, and then immediately after I ordered one, I you know tweeted that they're on sale, and then they were gone. Yeah, they were sold out in minutes. Yes. Yes. Like, oops. Hopefully there'll be more available soon. Yes, indeed. Okay. All right, excellent. So uh, Xavier asks, will the Nexus 4 get the same performance as BQ? Um, I'm not sure what exactly you're asking there. Well, they're different hardware, different chipsets, uh, so there's going to be differences between them. We don't especially favor you know, performance improvements in one over the other, uh, so it's not like we... Um, you know, we optimize the experience or do anything to improve the, the performance of the BQ device over and above the Nexus 4 uh, because it's the same software that runs on both at our layer, the bit that we control. Underneath that, but it's a bit out of our control because the the GPU driver is uh, is a binary blob that we don't control and some of the other bits are, are um, out of our control. And obviously the hardware underneath is, you know, a fixed... Um, you know, number of cycles per second, and you know, and a certain amount of resources. So, you know, there's there's a limit to what you can do with a device. Um, so, you know, if if we do discover any optimizations that that can be done, and I know the guys are working on that, that'll roll out to all the fans, unless unless it's something that's unique to that device. Oh, I suppose that's a fair answer. Uh, Kopi's right. The short answer is we don't we don't necessarily. Uh, target specifically, so we, we wouldn't target only one device for performance improvement. In general, we make everything universal. So, Which is one of the great uh, stories of, that we have for, with the over-the-air update feature, is that we're able to, to push all these bits out, and so you get you get lovely new stuff as it comes, and as we create it, and we're not going to be preferential for, for any one device. Right. I've, I've seen people report that, um, for example, uh, one of the games that's in the store is uh, Cut the Rope, and um, it's it runs better on the BQ device than it does on the the Nexus device. Um, I I honestly don't know why that is. Uh, I I I would just guess there's a difference in the hardware underneath. You know, unfortunately. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fish Force Ultra asks: Are all the Ubuntu core apps available for the x86 Ubuntu Next daily build as well? Oh, that's one for you, I think. Isn't yeah, it? this is this is near and dear to my heart. Um, I think, uh, I guess the answer the answer is probably no, but I'd like them all to be, and there there isn't necessarily a reason that they they all don't have to be. This is a uh, this is something to bug. Um, who could we bug specifically? Who, who's uh, whose day should I run? Anyway, we we uh, we were asking for uh, easier support for what we call fat packages, which are simply a way for developers to easily distribute uh, multi-architecture uh, versions of their packages. So in English, it just means that we want to make it easier for uh, developers, including the core app developers, to target uh, 
uh, x86 and uh, and the phone. So as it stands now, they are have to be published separately. Uh, there are a few apps that have been published separately, and I don't know the status of all of them. Um, I guess at this point, if you if there's an app that isn't uh, in the x86 store and you want it to be, uh, you can definitely contact the developer or grab the source yourself and 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 make a click and sideload it. Uh, well, that's the worst case scenario, I suppose. But things like uh, file manager on terminal are definitely there, and uh, anything that obviously is not compiled uh, on your end, that's that's sort of a, a guessing game, I suppose, as to what's there and what's not. But if there is something that you find that's not there and you want it to be, go ahead and go ahead and ping one of those guys, and uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to to publish a build for you. Yeah, and uh, I, I spoke to um, Zoltan and Benjamin, who work on the SDK, and they were telling me they're working on fat packages right now that, that that'll all be baked into the SDK soon. I don't know how they're doing that, but I look forward to being able to press a button and generate a fat package that you know does all the magic, and I can just upload that to the store. That'd be awesome. Yes, it, it is true. It is, it is coming, 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 coming. Uh, I know, in fact, I think there was Benjamin had a post not that long ago on the mailing list. Uh, talking a little bit about uh, his thoughts on implementation. So, cool, cool. Questions are starting to build up, so we're probably going to have to go a bit faster, or we'll overrun again. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new there. All right. Yeah. Uh, he was asking again: Will it be a VQ E5 or E6 Ubuntu edition? Uh, um, you'd have to ask VQ, I think, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think so. Great question. Sadly, we don't have an answer. Uh, Stormflood asks, do you know any new details about the upcoming Mizu phone? Well, uh, let's say no. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, I don't know what's new to him. So, you know, uh, sure. I, I, I really only knew what, what everyone else has seen, you know, that Mizu have been teasing stuff online and... Uh, you know, we we've said it's a MX4. You know, um, Mazu have said that, and uh, I think that's that's pretty much the only information there is. I don't know what new information there is. I I don't know any. So um, I'm still focused on the BQ device at the moment. So um, Mazu is kind of beyond my radar at the moment. Right. Um, I would say uh, new details should be coming soon. I mean, I I can imagine they've they've been teasing and teasing and teasing. So. Um, I can imagine we're going to see see some uh, see some more details very very soon. Um, mm. We shall see. All right. Uh, Steve Job asks, will it be a smart move by Canonical to bring back Ubuntu One Cloud? It would be magical seeing all the documents sync across all of our Ubuntu devices. Um, this is sort of an interesting question. I guess I'll give give my take on it, and Popey can as well. But uh, from from my perspective. Um, I I think it's it, it works out best for us to sort of focus on the things that we're that we're good at um, and and leave it to uh, others to provide uh, those sorts of services and there's plenty of great providers um, I know some many people are, are very happy with Dropbox but they're not the only ones um, and the, there's excellent integration with uh, many providers on the desktop as well uh, or you can even run your own via own cloud which I've uh, played around with in the past. All great solutions, um, so I don't see a compelling need for us to also offer a solution. Yeah, I, I, I am inclined to agree. I <clears throat> I don't think Ubuntu One uh, cloud storage was ever as compelling as the other options, and now that it doesn't exist, the others have, you know, accelerated on beyond what Ubuntu One ever was. Uh, so we'd have to divert from the stuff that we're doing in order to develop or redevelop Ubuntu One, and I, d- I don't think that's worthwhile. What I would love to do, what I would love to see, is one of the free software uh, sync tools to be integrated into the platform or adopted by the platform, or for someone to, um, you know, build the necessary infrastructure that we can use it in the platform. And my personal favorite is SyncThing. Um, which uh, it's written in Go. It's uh, it's under active development. Uh, it runs on you know i386, AMD64, ARM. You know, runs on everything, and uh, it's <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty awesome. So I I personally would hope that at some point we can get a sync thing client built for the phone, 
and I can pick and choose which folders I synchronize with my desktop and my home server and my cloud server or whatever and uh, do all that kind of encrypted synchronization of stuff around the place. That's that's my personal hope. Cool uh, thing. Next, uh, yeah, sync thing. It's awesome. It's super, super awesome. Um, next question. Uh, BQ also make tablets and then a uh, tongue out emoticon. Uh, any plans for a tablet? Not necessarily BQ. Uh, I don't think we've announced any plans for a tablet yet, have we? Uh, I don't think so. Um, obviously, folks will note that we've had the Nexus 7 tablet as a reference device for a while now. Um, yeah. And I, I believe showed off some really cool features, including things like side stage. And there's a lot of interesting ideas there, but I don't think there's anything official. Ah, yes. There's the tablet. Yeah, I you know we have the Nexus Four, uh, sorry, the Nexus Seven and Nexus Ten as you know supported devices, but I, I I know we keep saying this, the focus has totally been on BQ right you know right now and the phone experience. So I know the guys working in the design team are working on improving the whole tablet experience um, because it's not been our main focus for the last few months. So um, we'll. Um, yeah, watch this space, I think. I, I don't know any plans at the moment, so uh, uh, you know about as much as I do. Okay. Uh, Stormfoot asks, will the phones from last week's flash sale be shipped in March? He says, I ordered the, the E4, 4.5 of Android, and it was shipped to Germany within three days. Right. So those are... So the... If you if you buy the E45 with Android, that's an already existing phone that's available through, you know, their their sales channel, um, and they already have the pipeline to manufacture those and you know and deliver those. Ubuntu phone is a new thing for them, and I think for any manufacturer, new phone manufacturer, this is potentially a pretty scary prospect to to put your put your um, your money behind. Uh, or your company in some way behind a new platform. So I think it makes sense for them in the way that they run their business to um, find out what the, the gauge the um, demand um, and build sufficient devices to fulfill that demand rather than them building, you know, let's arbitrarily pick a random number, 100,000 devices, and then have them sit in a warehouse somewhere and it turns out that, you know, God forbid, a Ubuntu phone, you know, falls apart and doesn't succeed and they end up with a whole swathe of devices that they can't sell. You know, that, that would be worst case scenario for them, given they're an outsider and they, you know, they don't necessarily, um, you know, drink the Kool-Aid, the Ubuntu Kool-Aid quite like we do. Uh, so I think it's not unreasonable for them to have a just-in-time uh, fulfillment for the new devices, which are not exactly the same as the Android ones. So my Android version has the three little buttons at the bottom that you get on um, you know, normal Android phones. The Ubuntu ones don't. Um, so there's a little mar there's a little manufacturing change, and also the factory has to be spun up for um, the manufacturer of the phones uh, to have the you know, the software installed during the factory as a process. Rather that you know, it's not a case that they manufacture a bunch of dev devices that run Android, and then they have a warehouse full of people over in China who attach USB cables and reflash them with Ubuntu. That's not what happens. Ubuntu gets baked in at the factory, and that's obviously a change in process for them. So, um, yeah, we're we're um, blazing a bit of a trail with them at the moment, and I'm sure things will get faster and easier with subsequent uh, phone manufacturers. The other thing to point out is it's Chinese New Year at the end of this week, which uh, I didn't realize, but the factories kind of all shut down in the same way that we all shut down over Christmas and New Year in the Western world. They shut down over Chinese New Year. So there are no phones being manufactured next week and the week after. So that's a contributing factor to why it's not coming until March. Yeah, I don't think I have anything to add to that. Popey was actually actually quite thorough. Um, Sorry, I'll give you a chance to answer some of them. In a minute. No, no, no. That, that, <laughs> no that, was, that was a great answer, which is to say, right, there's existing phones and existing channels are are, are more available. This is new stuff. So, hmm. 
Um, Rocky asks, how many devices sold in the first flash sale? Uh, I think you might be talking to the wrong folks, seeing as that was that was BQ, so I don't know that we have um, anything we can say. I think the standard answer is that's commercially sensitive information and we don't reveal that. That's that's what I've been told anyway. When when yeah. I saw people asking on Twitter, you know, how many, that was the standard answer, which is what you, you know, kind of expect really. Sure. Right. Uh, Alan Bell asks, what is the advantage to of two canonical and BQ of doing flash sales? Um, this is a another interesting question. Um, I think the the idea behind the flash sale was uh, to help gauge interest, as Pope was talking about, to gauge gauge, uh, gauge interest, uh, build excitement, and uh, um, you know, it's it's a it's a new thing, right? So you want to sort of um, build some enthusiasm and and build some exclusivity into into uh, the the sale of the phone and the launch and that sort of thing, uh, and build buzz. I, I don't. It was it was. Um, uh, Primarily intended to to uh, to help spur adoption and to to help uh, drive enthusiasm, obviously, in, into what we're doing. Yeah, I, it's um, it's kind of a question for marketing people. It's it's one of those things that you know I I wouldn't want to second guess what their plan is, and I'm sure you know. They're better at this marketing spiel than I ever would be, so I I, I, leave, I leave that up to them. Um, but from my perspective, you know, if you're being completely cynical, you could say, well, why don't they just open a store and just let people buy them? Um, and obviously, having these flash sales forces you know a significant number of sales to happen in a short period of time. And when you know you've got these orders that have been taken at you know certain pockets of time over you know the month leading up to the deliveries, um, it allows you to spin the factory up in a most cost-efficient manner, rather than say you know well let's open the store and then you know people sit back and say well let's see how they're how well they're adopted, let's see how uh, whether whether people actually buy the thing. I'll, I'll wait for I'll wait for a, you know a few hundred people to review them on YouTube before I. Before I buy them, at which point you know it's less economic for BQ to you know spin out another hundred devices and another hundred devices and another hundred devices. It just makes financial sense in my mind. Remember, not a marketing expert. It makes sense in my <laughs> mind that they would spin the factory up for a short period of time and churn out you know how many hundreds or thousands of of devices that got ordered. That's just my simplistic, you know. Uh, sky high view of it. Okay, next question. Uh, Nightmare, are you able to shine any light on what the plans are for Ubuntu Phone Project over the next few years? Well, it's total world domination, isn't it? Nick? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Uh, like you needed to ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you know, there, there are certain things that we are working on, obviously. You know, we, we want to be able to have the converge story land properly because at the moment the convergence story is um, not fully baked you know we've got the ability to run software on the desktop and some of the same software on the phone and the same software on the tablet but we don't have the ability to you know plug in an HDMI cable and it turn into your desktop that's just not fully baked yet it's being worked on uh, actively right now by the Unity and Mir developers, and design are putting a lot of input into that as well. But also we're iterating on things like you know, the, the scopes experience, the feedback we're getting from user testing, um, and building relationships with ISVs to uh, bring their apps to the phone, and uh, you know all, all the other things in improving the platform so that you know the, someone porting a, an app or a game from another from another phone uh, platform will have access to the kind of services that they expect to have. Um, so you know, there's there's a lot that's going to happen over the next couple of years. Um, and um, I, you know, I I look back. If you look back two years ago to see what the phone looked like um, two years ago, it's it's night and day between you know our very first image that we showed at um, CES 
in uh, 2013 where most of the apps didn't actually work and some of the apps were even what we call cardboard cutouts. You know, they were just, you press a button and you get a static image and it wasn't actually an app. You know, to, to show off what, you know, the future holds for Ubuntu Phone. Two years later, you know, we actually have real apps and, uh, you know, we have an SDK. And we, you know, I, I, I find it difficult to imagine what two years from now will be. But I, I think, you know, cherry picking some of those things would definitely be there. Right. I would also add... Um... The plan over the next few years is to is to be available everywhere, right? So world domination from being on every phone, but also being in every every region. So, being being a North American, uh, I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, so we'll see the spread Europe, Asia, and North America. So yeah, uh, and and that was something that uh, I know. Um... Joey Snowden, who runs OMG Ubuntu, was one of the insiders, and uh, he was uh, he came up to London uh, last Friday, one before, and it was it was lovely to meet him. I'd never met him before. And uh, I know he took that as a great opportunity to discuss future plans with uh, Christian Perino, who heads up the phone division, and Jane Silver, our CEO. And you know, he was asking questions of everyone, trying to get some insider knowledge. And uh, I think he mentioned on Twitter or on his uh, on his blog that uh, there's going to be a phone for the American market. That announcement they're hoping somewhere around about June. So you know, that gives us a, a kind of timeline of. You know, we've got Europe with the BQ phone, Asia with the the Meizu phone, and then this other potential partner in June for the American market. And, you know, what's left after that? You know, phones on the moon, Antarctica, you know, Mars. <laughs> yeah, it's first first the uh, the moon base on Mars, then, then phones. Yeah, yeah. Order is important here. Um... Let's see, where were we? Uh, Rocky's next question, I think. Uh, are Canonical Rocky. negotiating major application vendors to bring their apps to Ubuntu Touch? Yes, <laughs> is the short answer. Uh, you know, we, we have a, a team of people whose job it is to do that, and they are building relationships and, you know, demonstrating what we've done so far and... Uh, Detailing what some of our plans are for the future, so that they can plan for you know, whether they port their applications or libraries or frameworks or whatever across to Ubuntu Phone. Um, that's a different department than mere networking, um, but you know we know that they're they're doing that kind of stuff. And then suddenly, out of the blue, uh, an app appears in the store, or uh, you know we we suddenly get notified that um, you know we've got a we've got a new partner and they're working on something new and interesting. But um, you know these a lot of these partners are you know keep their cards very close to their chest and um, you know, don't like to reveal too many details about the things that they're working on because it could be commercially sensitive, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's as much of a surprise sometimes to us as it is to you. So when I saw, you know, the paid version of Cut the Rope uh, going to the uh, going to the store, I was just as surprised as everybody else um, and, you know, bought it straight away and, uh, yeah, have been using a few hours on my phone. <laughs> On that game, so yeah, I, I'm looking forward to these these other other companies bringing their products. Um, I look forward to that. Indeed. Um, Alan Bell has another question. He says, "Are there any any plans to to make the the same case, uh, the the glory hole case for other handsets?" Um, That's a good question. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I, that. Again, that was a surprise uh, to me. I had I'd not seen that. And uh, at the event in London, there was a guy from BQ there, and he had one of the uh, one of their phones with that case on it uh, already. So you know, it's uh, it's 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 an interesting thing that uh, the BQ can you know already generate you know accessories for a phone that you know hasn't actually shipped yet. So it's nice that, you know, on day one you can buy a phone and you can buy your cases to go with it. I personally don't put cases on my phones, but yeah, it'd be nice if, uh, if you know, either other manufacturers or indeed third parties create cases for these devices that, that have, you know, unique uh, elements that fit the Ubuntu experience, whether it's being able to see the, the little hole or being able to see uh, notifications or what, I don't know. But yeah, that's cool. 
Yeah, de- uh, definitely cool. Uh, I am unlike Alan. I am a case person. I I tend to uh, to break things if I don't put in a case. So. Oh, I break them. I I you know I just, I just don't put cases on. We <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah, good. Uh, all right. Um, I think GMB is next, and he asks. Some reviewers have said that it takes a long time to flip through all the scopes one by one, especially if many installed. Are there other ways of navigating through scopes? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Alan. Um, well, you swipe up from the bottom. So um, yes, uh, I we we've been showing the phone off. Uh, to a number of people um, doing user testing in um, in London, uh, and these are users of Android, users of iOS, and others uh, who've been testing the phone. And yeah, one of the bits of feedback we've got, as well as what we've got from the insiders, is it can be a bit slow to swipe through the um, the scopes. Um, so there's a few things there. It is one, you could limit the number of scopes that you have, which you know is not a great answer. Uh, another one is, well, we need to make that experience faster and fluid and and you know and better. Uh, but there is actually another way you can flip between scopes. If you swipe up from the bottom uh, when you're in the dash, uh, it gives you a list of all the scopes. You can just tap one and it just takes you straight to it. So yeah, there are there are shortcuts. Um, but you know we're constantly evaluating these these user interactions and uh, you know we we change stuff all the time. It's um, I, I don't think there's a lot in the phone that's you know hard set in stone, especially from a design perspective. Um, things are changing all the time. So um, you know if you get one of these devices and uh, you update regularly, you'll probably notice you know a little change here, a little change there, and that almost always has come from you know direct feedback. From users who've told us, oh, this is, you know, this is slow or this is cumbersome or there could be a better way to do this or that or whatever. Yeah, I think I've I've chosen the slightly secondary answer, which is to say, limit the number of scopes to what I find meaningful. But yeah, I you know when I was testing scopes, we had a scopes contest recently, and uh, I added all of the scopes in the world onto my phone. And uh, yeah, that wasn't. I, I wasn't having a good time with having all of them on there. Um, so you know, I, I, I do think there's a good rationale for limiting the number of scopes you would have on a device to like major categories of information that you're interested in, whether it's news, music, video, nearby. You know, those those kind of things for me are important to me. But someone else might have, you know, ten different categories of scopes that they're super interested in. Um, so um, yeah, basically we just need to improve wherever we get that kind of feedback. Indeed, um, which is which is one of the great uh, great pieces of, of, of having the insiders. So, um, mm-hmm. Fred asks, do you know the Fairphone project, and do you think the goals of Fairphone and Ubuntu align? And then it says disclaimer: I'm a Fairphone owner. Um, I actually know the Fairphone project. Alan, do you? Uh, I know. I was say, I, that's okay. Um, yeah, Daniel's got one actually. I played with uh, uh, Daniel Holbach, who's also on the community team. I played with um, with his Fairphone in Florida, probably oh, it's probably a year ago now. Um, it's a really nice device, and um, you know, I can I can see what they're aiming for, and actually, you know, I've I've had conversations with people from Fairphone about uh, porting to their device. And there are some similarities between some of the devices that we we run on and the internals of um, their Fairphone device. And you know, it, it could well be that that may be a supported device in the future. I, I don't know. But um, yeah, I can see there is an overlap in, in some of the goals uh, of Ubuntu and the Fairphone project. So I can see there would be you know, quite a nice fit um, between the two projects there. Um, but uh, you know, if they want to, uh, if someone wants to have a go at porting, uh, David Calais is rewriting the porting guide as we speak, um, and very soon that will be published on the developer portal. Um, and so, uh, you know, the the Fairphone developers themselves, or someone you know who's keen or an enthusiast, um, could uh, could do that porting themselves. Indeed. Um... 
Yeah, I would agree with Alan. I don't think there's a, a reason that uh, the Fairphone story is, is largely based upon the hardware, so I think uh, you want to uh, uh, bring the software side of that is, is a, just makes an even nicer story. Um, Fred asks a second question. He says, CalDev and CardDev is really important to me because I use non-Google services for contacts and calendars. What is the status and roadmap on that? I think this is an excellent question for uh, Alan, actually. Um, well, I'm not sure. Um, it, I know there have been some community people who've developed um, online accounts plugins, and it is possible for people to create you know, additional online accounts plugins and propose them for inclusion, or indeed include them bundled in with um, an application. So you know you could you could create an application which you know is some kind of calendar application that includes um, an online accounts plugin that would connect to um, a generic arbitrary uh, CalDAV server, for example. Um, that's possible. Um, I know it's certainly on our roadmap. I don't know where it is on the roadmap because you know it's one of the million other things that that are that are on the roadmap. But yeah, if you if you are interested in getting involved, if that's something you would like to. Uh, uh, get involved with, and uh, by all means, let us know, and we can um, put you in touch with the right people if you want to help out with that. All right, uh, Stormflood asks, if you are talking to major application vendors about porting their applications, do you also get access to development devices, or are they restricted to the emulator and use Nexus, devi Nexus devices like anyone else? Um, <clears throat> The quick answer is, uh, uh, personally, Alan and I don't get a bunch of, of uh, free stuff. That's not the, the normal, you know, free access hardware, all that sort of thing. Um, so personally, we don't we don't get those sorts of goodies, sadly. Uh, and and I don't know if we can specifically answer that that question because obviously it's going to be uh, be a use case. Uh, you know, if if whatever vendor we're working with, obviously if there's hardware specific bits. Um, it would naturally make sense that, that uh, they would supply the, the engineering teams with that hardware. Um. So the way I read that is, you know, if we're talking to a, an application vendor, do they get access to the stuff before you know, uh. the public? Um, and I, so I mean, if you look at the state of play we're in right now, um, the devices that we support, Nexus 4, Nexus 7, Nexus 10, um, and the BQ devices, which are coming out soon, um, I I don't think we're in a, we're at a stage where we could have a, a a bunch of devices that we could um, we could give to a software vendor. You know, we could say to them, well, if you get a Nexus Four and flash it, that's that's like you know ninety percent of the experience that a user is going to get in a month's time when they buy a BQ device. You know, it's going to be a similar kind of experience. So that would be a good thing to target. And in fact, that's what we have done. Uh, so uh, when we were um, talking to Evernote about the Reminders application, which is a note-taking application that synchronizes with Evernote in the cloud, they wanted to see what we were developing. And so we said to them, and now, and now this is like six or more months ago, uh, when you know none of us had BQ phones, uh, we said to them, well, the only device you can really test it on from a like mobile point of view is a Nexus 4. So yeah, they went and got a Nexus 4 and flashed it, and they tested the app out on the Nexus 4. So um, maybe in the future, you know, when there are multiple devices for sale that you can easily get, and you don't have to climb, jump through hoops to do flash sales and stuff, you know, in a in a few months' time, maybe uh, that would be a good time for us to, you know, have a a stock of these things and like send them out to ISVs and say, look, that's the device, or yeah, they could just buy them themselves, you know, because they're not stupendously expensive devices to to buy. And I and I know some people who have already done that, who've been buying the Nexus Four and using that as a reference for porting uh, their app or library or framework or whatever it is. So so people are kind of already doing that, um, I think. Okay, uh, Alan Bell asks. Uh... Uh, another question, another good one. He says, with the current barriers to purchase in place, how do you give ISVs the confidence that the platform will eventually be available to a big enough market? Well, you know, we're only, uh, as I understand it, the, the flash sale is, you know, 
as I explained earlier, it's a, it's a a new uh, thing for BQ. So um, yeah, there's going to be early adopters like us who you know go and buy this buy this device, and then in some time there will be devices available through more mainstream channels. You know, so going to a website and clicking the buy button. That's what I would expect, and I. While I, I would say, you know, to an ISV, hey, it would be really great if you could port your app across, that's not a zero-cost thing for them to do. Um, so, you know, they, as Alan is alluding to, they need to know that there's going to be a market there for them to sell their app to or sell their service to. Um, and, you know, right now, there isn't. There, there aren't enough Ubuntu phones on the market to sustain, you know, any significant application porting. So, you know, we're kind of looking a bit ahead for that kind of thing, I would think. Um, but, you know, I think ISVs can see that. You know, they, they can see that, you know, we're still in the early stages. It's only one vendor so far that is, you know, about to ship a device. Once we get to two and then three and then four and, you know, and it by next year, for example, there'll be significantly more devices in the market. It is a, it is a chicken and egg situation and... Uh, yeah, it's something we need to deal with. Right. Um, I would say actually the the confidence that we can give them is is to continually build up these uh, devices and launch in new regions and places. Um, and and this is part of what the the scope story is also about, giving them a way to sort of um, uh, get their toes wet uh, with offering their services with a with a low uh, development uh, time impact and and cost. Right. So that you can sort of dip your toe into this market, be an early adopter, be a leader without having to make a huge investment uh, in what is a, a blossoming platform. And so we can sort of, everybody can grow together, right? Yeah. Um, Alan has another question. He says, will the screen resolution of the Mizu device be the same as the BQ device? Um, from the specs that I've seen, I haven't actually seen a, an MX4. Well, I've picked one up and gone, oh, that's nice, and handed it back <laughs> to the owner. Um, <laughs> But I've not actually, you know, played with one or, you know, physically uh, detailed the specs and analyzed the specs myself. But from the specs that I've seen online, it's a higher resolution display than uh, the BQ device or the Nexus 4. Um, I think it's, I think it's 1080p or 1200 or thereabouts. But um, I, I don't know for sure. But the MX4 specs are all over the web, so you could just look them up. Without wishing to say, just Google it, Alan. Just yeah, Bing it, for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, it's my understanding that it, it is high resolution, but I don't know either offhand. Uh, Alan says, is the is the background wallpaper located at uh, user share backgrounds forty final? Hmm. So that's where the the background is on the desktop. Even now, with every release, I think. I don't know why that, that happened, but the very first background wallpaper was in a directory called Backgrounds, and it was called Warty Final Background, uh, Warty Final Ubuntu PNG or something like that. And for every subsequent release, we've it, the file names have been the same all the time, even though the name of the release has changed from you know Warty through Hori and all the other releases. The name of that file has never changed. It's quite nice, but no, I just looked on the phone and that file doesn't exist on my phone, so. Uh, I didn't know this. I didn't know that that was still the same. Yeah. Weird, isn't it? Is that... Oh, that's the default wallpaper, though, right? Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, I have I have a different wallpaper on my device, but um, that's because I personalized it. Um, Oops. <laughs> uh, okay. So do we know where it is, Alan? No, uh, it'll be in a package somewhere, but I don't know. <laughs> it's somewhere on the file system, you know. Yeah, I don't know either because I just I just set it. I didn't look for it. I uh, I imported a bunch of photos. I think uh, I was I was browsing the web one day and I I saw a, a here's a gallery full of great pictures for your phone. So I um, yeah I I grabbed them all and um, uh, yeah. I would show you a screenshot, but now we've um, locked down the phone. I can't actually take a screenshot of the lock screen because you have to unlock the phone to take a screenshot now. So I can't yeah. actually. 
to show that to you. But I've got two little cats staring, space cats staring into space as my uh, as my lock screen. So yeah. I Again. currently have Gandalf for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know okay. what I put that on there, but anyway. Uh, all right, so Stormfloat asks, uh, will there be some kind of feedback from the App Store to developers? E.g., will Canonical provide aggregate statistics about search keywords so that we know which applications users want the most? Uh, and he says an official voting platform or something like that would also be a possibility. Um, that sounds awesome. Yeah. These are, these are great ideas and suggestions. Yeah, so uh, Bueno is the person you need to poke on IRC. I know you're hanging out in the same IRC channel as him. So uh, Bueno, B-E-U-N-O, uh, he manages the App Store. And I know he has, you know, almost daily requests from people asking, you know, can I do Bitcoin? Can I uh, give tips to uh, to app developers rather than, you know, can I do a pay, pay what I want kind of thing? Um, can I reply to feedback? Can I delete feedback? Uh, yeah, it, we get these questions all, all the time, and I know a lot of this stuff is, is on his roadmap, and it's stuff he would really love to develop. Um, but it's just yeah, getting getting the basics done right first, and then all these extra things will, will come in time, I'm sure. Um, but um, yeah, Bueno is the person to, uh, to poke with those kind of requests about the store, because he manages that. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, next question. Um, the current app lifecycle prevents an app from running in the background. Do you think this principle will hold uphold over time, or will there be some exceptions necessary at some point? Well, there already are exceptions uh, for certain things. Um, so, for example, uh, if you if your app wants to download something, then you can offload that to the download service, and that that happens in the background. Uh, if you want to play audio, that is offloaded to a background service um, which plays the audio, and the same for, for some other things as well. Um, so we're already developing services in order to do some things in the background. I think I think there's a reluctance to have a carte blanche, you know, allow an app to do anything it likes in the background because, you know, that leads to, you know, battery death and... Uh, you know, your one one app killing the entire phone experience for you. So, I think there's a reluctance to do that, um, and rather to create services that applications can use uh, in the background. Right, and that that helps make sure that if there is uh, performance issues or battery issues or whatever it is, we can you can improve the service uh, universally, and so you don't have you won't have a bad app. You might have an app that exposes. Uh, a bug in a service, but you won't have necessarily a bad app. You can fix the service and and then therefore fix the issue. Hopefully, right. right. So you know we've got there's a there's a service that runs in the background called Media Scanner, and uh, if you put an SD card in the phone that's full of music, uh, it will scan the music and pick out the ID3 tags and the genre and the artist and all that kind of stuff, stick it in a database, and it will go and get the um, album art as well. So, you know, we've got some services that, that can do things like that. And, you know, we've we've had bugs in those services where they've, you know, run away and eaten lots of CPU time or consumed more battery than you'd like them to. And we keep a close eye on those. We monitor those kind of things. Um, but I, I think users would be uh, somewhat annoyed. Uh, it's, it's a delicate balance to play, you know, having apps that are fully functional, um, and can do whatever the developer wants to you know, be inventive to do, but equally not killing the device for the user. All right. Uh, Fishforce asks, uh, in terms of functionality, will Unity 8 on the desktop be much, di much different than Unity 7? Also, when are we likely to see some advances in the Unity 8 desktop, a.k.a. more advanced window management? Um, great question. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, Unity 8 is is similar to Unity 7 in many ways. There are some subtle differences because it's it's another rewrite of Unity, and along the way we've learned you know things from previous Unity versions that you know will build upon for the next one. So it's not an identical duplicate of Unity 7. Um, I know that there are uh, people like Michael Zanetti who works on on Unity 8 
who's um, working on some of those things like window management. Um, I was at FOSDEM in Brussels a couple of weeks ago, and um, Savic was giving a talk about Ubuntu Phone and showed off a tablet, a Nexus 7, with um, window mode on so that you could drag and move windows around on a on a tablet. So, um, yeah, it, it is coming along, and it's, it's, it's moving along, but, you know, with everything focused on on the phone at the moment those things are a little bit of a backseat but they're ramping up over the next six to 18 months for sure yeah I would say I assume that that you have seen uh, have seen and played with unity in the desktop uh, if you haven't um, there's a there's a lovely couple ways to to consume that either via a live image, kind of like the, the Ubuntu live CD that you probably use to install Ubuntu, or uh, via an LXC container, which is a, a lovely thing to, that allows you to isolate and, and make a little miniature installation of, of Unity 8 without messing up your desktop. Uh, and you can run that even on Trusty. Um, I think I'll paste the wiki link in the IRC channel if you, if you want to follow up and, and take a look at those. But yeah, you can play with it now. Um, and it, it's a lot of fun, and you can sort of see for yourself some of those differences. Uh, I think the, one of the biggest differences for me is uh, really the dash and, and how scopes work. It's, it's really much, a much more fleshed out uh, sort of version uh, than what we see in Unity 7. Uh, and by that, really, I mean that I don't really use scopes uh, very much in, in Unity 7, maybe just a couple. Um, and in Unity 8, I can see actually wanting to really consume, consume those a bit more. And um, I mean... It's uh, the store is also interesting. So there's definitely some differences. It's but I, it's sort of sort of more uh, minor enhancements, a continual refining of uh, of Unity. Let's see, uh, Alan Alan Bell. Next question. He says, which MX4 variant will Ubuntu Phone be based upon? MX4, MX4 Pro. And he's noting that uh, he looked the resolution up. On okay. Google, one, not Bing. As uh, okay. On Google, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I, I have one on order, uh, but it's it's not arrived yet. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, we'll see. Um, next oh, question. I think we missed one, actually. Did we answer about notifications? Ah, no, we didn't. Uh, sorry, GMB asked, does the infographic show notifications? No. Uh, the infographic shows uh, personalized data, like how many steps you've walked, how many text messages you've sent, music tracks you've listened to, that kind of thing. I don't know if it's going to show notifications or if that, that UI is going to change or not. I don't know. <coughs> cool. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Ivo Xavier asks, can we expect improvements on the Nexus 4 battery management? He says, if I leave my Nexus 4 at night in airplane mode, by morning it has lower battery. I tested it many times. So the bug uh, is 1372413. It's <laughs> the one he <that> <laughs> wants to look at. Um, there's, there's a known issue at the moment with tracking. Um, and uh, it was met, I saw a thread on Google Plus uh, yesterday and today that one of the insiders was mentioning there's a, there's a problem with uh, with battery life and it's kind of you know going down very quickly and uh, there's a few people working on that right now doing some analysis and uh, debugging um, so I would track that bug one three seven two four one three um, I th I think that's a general purpose bug I don't think that's specific to the BQ device but I know a few people have reported it on the BQ device but um, I think it's I think it's in general um, I think. Um, <clears throat> I guess Akiva is reposting a question about any chance of getting some C++ uh, OpenGL documentation for the Ubuntu Phone SDK. Um, Uh, well, um, hmm. that's a good question. Um, so I, I think um, what would be interesting is maybe uh, having some documentation about using things like SDL 
which uh, Mir now supports SDL2, um, might be interesting. Um, and if anyone has any examples of um, C++ OpenGL documentation, I, I'm not sure how that would be specific to the Ubuntu phone. Um, we could certainly reference some third-party documentation. Um, but, uh, yeah, I... Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know that there would be anything specific that would make sense in the SDK. Right. I mean, it's yeah. it's GLES like, you know, anything else. Uh, right. Mobile. Right. Um, okay, so then he asks, uh, Akiva asks again, are either of you using Unity 8 while you develop? Um, the answer to that is no, but I have a, a personal wish slash hope that I will be before the end of the cycle. And uh, I challenge uh, anyone else who wants to sort of join me on that psychotic quest to, to go for it. Uh, as it stands, um, uh, at least well, at the beginning of the year, uh, that was not really possible at all because of the lack of window management. So it was really kind of on, on fun. Um, it's getting a lot closer now. Uh, so I will probably try it again soon, uh, maybe another month. Um, and uh, see if I can stick on it. So, <clears throat> so I should fun. try that as well, actually. Now that I've I've upgraded to um, Vivid, uh, I, I forgot the <laughs> animal for a moment. Then. Uh, so I'm on Vivid on my my laptop, and it's an Intel laptop. So I could certainly try. Um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe by the end of the cycle. <laughs> That's a hope. That's a hope. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the best the best way to make that happen uh, is to is to use it and um, report bugs and issues and and, and just give it a whirl. But it, there's definitely going to be some growing pains. Right. So we got two minutes left. We should cherry pick a few questions. Sure. Let's go for it. Uh, so there's a couple of questions that uh, Akiva's copy and pasted from last week when. Uh, those slackers, Mike and uh, David, didn't finish off. Uh, ah, they didn't finish so, off questions. Yeah, so we're catching up for them. Uh, are there any conversations ongoing between Canonical and the Fairphone? Actually, we answered that earlier on before you arrived. Uh, so, boom, we've done that one. Uh, and the next one was, is one gig enough for Ubuntu to run smoothly, or will it lag like Android? Huh. So, yeah, the, the BQ phone has a gig of RAM. We're really aggressive with memory management. So, you know, we can suspend applications and kill them off uh, using the out-of-memory killer. Uh, so it shouldn't, uh, in, you know, in terms of, you know, fill up all the RAM and then, you know, have a horrible user experience. What should happen is applications get suspended. And then if you come back to them later on, uh, they can be woken up and, uh, and carry on. So, you know, in theory, not. Uh, will Nexus 4 users get scopes, get the scopes that are available in the BQ device? Good question. I don't know. Uh, that's one of those things that uh, it's, you know, differentiating um, one uh, phone from another. You know, some of, the, some of those may be BQ-specific ones or ones for the markets where BQ uh, sell their devices and so might not make sense on others. Uh, but if they're open source and developed in such a way that we can make them available on the Nexus 4 yen, yeah, that that does make sense. Yeah. Right. And I, I suspect that we'll see more of that as as things goes on. You know, the Mizu phone will get a similar sort of treatment and so on. So if you, if you're playing collect them all with the scopes, that might be that might be difficult for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially when uh, you know I can't even read the ones that I suspect will be on the. Uh, on the uh, Meizu phone. Right. My job. I, can't, I can't read the Spanish ones either on the BQ phone. That's right. Um, um, uh, I think we're out of time, actually. Yeah, we? we are out of time. There's, there's one last one I will address uh, from Alan. He says, uh, what are you putting on pancakes today? Uh, well, I've just looked up some awesome recipes using this app called Saucy Bacon, which is in the store. And there's loads of lovely recipes for things I could do with pancakes. So uh, I'll be going through that and uh, finding interesting things to put on my pancakes. But probably Nutella and bananas, I think. Uh, for myself, I actually had pancakes yesterday, and I, I put on strawberries. So. Nice. 
Always with the uh, incisive, interesting questions, Alan. Thank you. Bill. <laughs> yes, okay, thank we're um, we're over time. We should uh, we should wrap up, shouldn't we? For sure. Yes. So thank you, thank you, everyone, for all the wonderful questions. Uh, sorry if we missed yours. Uh, we did try, and uh, apparently Akiva will be there to to load up uh, Michael and uh, Daniel next week anyway. Uh, so again, thank you for this. Uh, and if you're if you're watching later, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, do you on air? You can catch. Lots of, uh, of, of lovely hangouts like this, including ours, every week at this time uh, on Tuesdays at 1600 UTC. Thanks, guys. See you. Thanks, Nick. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.